So what is EQ and why does everybody talk about it? The easiest way to think of EQ is that it's like turning up or down the volume for your music, but only in a very specific section of the frequency range. For example, the bass or the treble. If you think about it, that makes EQ a very useful tool. EQ actually stands for equalization because in the early, early days of telephone lines, they'd use it to help equalize or flatten out these telephone signals, which would have been degraded over long distances. But you can imagine this ability to change different parts of the frequency range would be able to help you shape the sound of your voice or an instrument exactly the way that you want it. Which is why EQ is used everywhere in audio and music production. In fact, you're already listening to an EQ'd version of my voice. In general, for end users like me and you, EQ comes in two forms, graphic EQ or GEQ and parametric EQ or PEQ. Graphic EQ is what you'll find most commonly in your phone settings or wireless earbuds app. It's pretty basic. All you can do is change the volume, also known as gain, at specific preset frequencies. It can get the job done if all you need is a simple touch up. But for anything a bit more serious, you'd have to use parametric EQ. The reason for that is because PEQ allows you to not only change the gain and the specific frequencies you're affecting, but also something called the Q factor. This Q factor determines how general or specific the EQ's effect will be. Like, if you wanted to change all of the treble, you'd have to set a low Q factor. But if you wanted to be a bit more precise, you'd set a high Q factor. As such, a very common use case would be to EQ out sibilance, that sharp s sound in a voice. You can select the exact frequency it occurs at, set a very high Q factor so you affect the frequency you want and nothing else, and then turn down the gain until you don't hear the sibilance anymore. Or say, if I had an acoustic guitar and I wanted to give it a bit more warmth to its sound, I like to start by adding a couple decibels in the lower mids, around the 500 hertz region or so, with a low Q so that it affects a wide range. Then from there, I'd experiment a little bit to really dial in the level of warmth that I want, making sure that I don't go so far and start to make it sound unnatural. So that covers the basics of EQ, but the real question is how can you start to use it? On Windows, the most easy way to do it is with something called Equalizer APO paired with the Peace EQ UI. This is how you can set a custom system-wide EQ for your computer. So if you find your speakers to be too bright or shrill, you can fix that pretty easily. For those of us in the headphone and in-ear hobby, you can go one step further with something called Auto EQ, which is now built into Peace EQ. Auto EQ aims to emulate the sound of one headphone to another. And it works pretty well, though there are caveats, which is a whole other topic of discussion. So if you want to learn more about that and in general how to improve your sound quality, make sure you subscribe to The Headphone Show.